The word of God says in Mark chapter 16, 1 to 3, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, mother of Jesus, and of Salome brought spices that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And they asked each other, who will roll away um, the stone from the entrance of the tomb? Father God, this is your moment. This is not about me. It is not about uh, my eloquence. It is not about who I am. It is all about you. And I pray now, loving Father, that may the words that flow from my lips not only be well coordinated, but Lord, I pray that they will be a blessing. May our hearts together be in unity with you. And so bless us now, we pray, as we spend a few thoughtful moments. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I want you to note here, um, at the very outset, at the very outset, the Bible says, when the Sabbath was over, um, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Jesus, and Salome, um, they brought spices. They brought spices. And in verse 2 it says, on the first day of the week. I, I want to take a moment to highlight the importance of the Sabbath day. I want to take a moment to highlight to you that as far as God is concerned, the Sabbath is sacrosanct. It means that if we are going to follow um, God's word, then we would ensure that we recognize that the Sabbath is a day of rest. That the Sabbath is a, a day not for work. Um, a Sabbath is, is a day for, um, and when I say rest, I don't mean to sleep. I don't mean to, um, to, to sit down comfortably in our easy chair at home. The Sabbath is a day of convocation. It is a day of assembling oneself together. It is a day of fellowship. It is a day of ascribing praise and glory to the Almighty God. And so Mary, the mother of Jesus, um, and, uh, and uh, Salome, um, they recognized that, and in as much as they wanted so much to anoint the body of Jesus, they waited until the first day of the week when the Sabbath was over. You know, I love these women. Um, in fact, let me, let me give you a little glimpse of what took place just prior to this particular verse that we have just read. You see, these ladies, they had, they had followed Jesus and cared for his needs. And you can see that in, Matthew, in Mark chapter 15 and verse 41. There were eyewitnesses to his crucifixion. They, they had experienced the three hours of darkness over the whole land. They had seen the, the, the curtain of the temple um, torn from top to bottom. They had heard the centurion's confession that surely this man was the son of God. They had felt the, 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 the earth shake and had seen the rocks split. They were at the foot of the cross. 
and were eyewitnesses to the death of Jesus. And now they were completely and utterly confused. I don't know if you have ever opened uh, a thousand piece puzzle box and not know where to begin. Well, I have. And not only, not only a thousand piece, they have, uh, they have some pieces, some, um, some puzzle that's not so complicated. They make it for the simple-minded. 300 pieces. And I pull open the 300-piece box and I am confused. No, do not know where to begin and how to get going. I suppose uh, that is how they must have felt at the time. They had watched as Joseph of Arimathea took Jesus' precious body down from, uh, from, uh, from the cross and uh, wrapped it in linen and laid it in uh, the tomb. They had observed the, the, the stone being placed um, in front of the entrance. And you know, stone is, um, stone is used for many things. Um, stone is used for foundation in buildings. Stone is used for um, knocking down fruits from the trees. Stone is used for all sorts of things. But here, the stone was used. Um, it was used um, to, um, to veil um, Jesus from uh, the eyes of those who want to see Jesus. Stone was used in a way that was not, um, was not come, you know, um, it was not a wonderful thing. The stone was used in this, in this case to hide the face of Jesus. It was used as an obscure, to, you know, it was obscuring the face of Jesus. Of course, the stone was used uh, and, was sim and had symbolized other things. Um, when it was ordered, it was ordered so that nobody could steal the body of Jesus and make the rulers look funny. And so they decided to do all of that. But I want you to know, my friends, I want you to know that regardless of what and how difficult and how large that stone was. And regardless of how much um, it was to, um, to ensure and to, um, the, the, um, that those people who, who crucified our Lord, those people who gave uh, the command to crucify him, God in heaven had a different thought. Wanting to aid and to add their touch to their Lord's burial. Um, the, the ladies, they put their own spices, salves, scented oils and perfumes together to anoint Jesus' body. They had walked with him and, and saw uh, to his needs on earth. They were, they were going to ceremoniously um, see to it that he was embalmed correctly in death. They did the very next thing they knew to do. They didn't know what to do when Jesus died on the cross. And so they did the very next thing they knew what to do. And we can learn an enormous lesson from this. I don't know, have you ever been confused 
and uh, not known the next step? Perhaps most of us have. Thinking that all is well, thinking that all is smooth sailing, and all of a sudden, the rug is pulled from under you. You know, a bad phone call, hurtful words, a lost job, a death in the family, an unfaithful spouse, a, a, a rebellious child, all kinds of illnesses and infirmities. You name it. The list of pains and trials are endless. These, these things are all stones. And I'll explain that in a moment. They are all stones. No one is exempt from pain. We live in a fallen world, and we can expect tribulation. And when it occurs, uh, we learn from Scripture to simply do the next thing. Abraham went out to cut wood when he was told to sacrifice his son. And he was a little bit, you know, he was, he was um, thinking hard about that. And so he went out to cut wood. Joseph made up his mind to be the best slave ever when he was sold into slavery by his brothers. Uh, Peter, uh, Peter went back fishing when his Lord was crucified. He did uh, the next thing, the very next thing. These women um, that we are talking about, they went to anoint their Lord as so it goes on. We do the next thing. And Jesus meets us there. Jesus meets us there. You know, be assured, if you are seeking to do God's will, he will not let you miss the opportunity. And I say it again, if you are seeking to do God's will, regardless of the obstacles that are in your way, God will not allow you to miss the opportunity. He won't allow you to miss the opportunity. Sometimes we just have to do the next thing we know to do and wait on the Lord. This is not always easy. It is not easy for, it was not easy for the disciples either. Um, and in reading uh, the accounts of the disciples, we do ourselves a great disservice by not putting flesh on them. You see, their pain and, and confusion were just as real as ours. Uh, take heart, believer, take heart. Just do the next thing, and Jesus will meet you there. You know, David said, I was, I was young, and now I am old. Yet I have never, I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Never. He goes on to say, for the Lord loves the just and will not forsake his faithful ones. I say to you when, you, when you have a heart to do God's will, God will ensure that you make it. After all, it is doing his will. Salvation, 
the salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in time of trouble. He is the stronghold in time of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them, um, David says. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. You know, this is for illustrative purpose. Let me just highlight to you that the stone that was placed in the entrance had very, very um, significant meanings and, very, and many meanings. But for illustrative purpose, the stone at the entrance of the tomb obscured Jesus from us. It was a barrier. It was a barrier. And that stone had to be rolled away. That stone could not remain in its place. It had to be rolled away. The rolling away of the stone signifying the defeat. <laughs> the defeat was about to happen. The defeat was coming. If the devil had managed to keep the stone in place, then those who put the stone there would have had satisfaction that they did right. The devil would be full of glee. But I want you to know, my friends, that Sunday morning was coming. Sunday morning was coming. Just like the women of the tomb, um, who went to the tomb, needed the stone to be rolled away so that they could get to Jesus. We, I says we, we need the huge stones in our lives to be rolled away so that there is nothing between the Savior and us. Our vision of Jesus is obscured by the huge stones in our lives. You know, the songwriter says, nothing between my soul and my Savior. Note of this world's delusive uh, dream. I have renounced all sinful pleasure. Jesus is mine. There's nothing between. Nothing between my soul and my Savior. So that his blessed face may be seen. Nothing preventing the least of his favor. Keep the way clear. Let nothing between. Let nothing between. Nothing between like worldly pleasure. Habits of life, um, though harmless they seem, must not my heart from him ever sever. He is my all. There is nothing between. So what are these stones? What are these stones? There are times that we struggle with the stone of discouragement. We struggle with the stone of discouragement. And uh, we are discouraged for, for many reasons. Many reasons. Perhaps your neighbor says something uh, um, not very complimentary um, to you. And you are struggling with that. You are discouraged. And that neighbor is perhaps someone that you sit beside in church. And you would not expect that from, from that individual. And as a result, you are discouraged. There are times when we feel isolated. Although we are in the midst of everybody. We are isolated and are lonely. And when these stones appear, they just veil Jesus from us. We cannot see the face of Jesus. We cannot muster the courage to go forward. We cannot even muster the courage to say, Lord, have mercy. 
Sometimes, sometimes our bodies are, are, are wrapped with pain. Pain, and, and as far as you are concerned, you live well, you eat well, and yet still, you are thrown down by, by debilitating diseases. And you say, Lord, why, 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 Lord? There are times you might be praying and you cannot hear the voice of God. You're praying and you're asking the Lord and, and you say, Lord, help, help, Lord. And it seems as though your prayer is not reaching the ear of God because that help is far away. There are stones that need to be rolled away. Sometimes the stone of worrying is prominent in our hearts. Uh, you know, we worry about everything. We worry about the bills. We worry about the job. We, we worry about the, the church. And I want you to know, my friends, you don't have to worry about the church because the church is God's church and God will take care of the business of the church. You do not have to worry about the church. Don't worry about the church. You know, sometimes when we worry about the church, we, we begin to want to fix the church by our own ideologies, or our own strengths, and we cause more problems than anything else. We don't have to worry about the church. God will take the church in charge. God will fix the church. God will sort it. Don't worry about it. In fact, the Lord did say the wheat and the tears must go together. God will fix the church in his own time. In his own time. Just worry about yourself. Worry about your family. Worry about your neighbor. And I used, and I put in worry in expression mark. You know, these, um, these worries, they, they serve as huge stones in our lives that obscure our vision of Christ. And these must be rolled away, making the path clear and the vision unobstructed. We must catch sight of Jesus. We must see Jesus. Nothing must stand in our way. Nothing must block our vision of Jesus. We must be able to gaze and fix our attention on Jesus. You see, friends, just as the stone was not permanent, so it is that the various stones that we have in our lives will one day be rolled away. One day, one day, those stones will be rolled away. You see, as the angel rolled away the stone, no sooner the Savior emerged a victor, and instantly the devil was declared a loser. And guess what? Guess what? Guess what? The devil can never be a winner because he is a permanent loser. He's a permanent loser. He, you know, his destiny is already fixed. Can no longer win. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. The stone was rolled away. Praise God. Jesus came forth um, a victor. The devil, the devil remained um, defeated and will always be defeated. Uh, today you, you are assured uh, that your troubles will not last forever. One day, all our troubles will be over. The stone of discouragement will be rolled away. The stone of isolation and loneliness will be rolled away. Yes, friends, one day, one day, the stone that prevents us from seeing Jesus will be rolled away. And we will have the privilege of walking with Jesus. 
Hey, I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to this. Just as Jesus walked the road of Emmaus along with the two of his followers, you are assured that one day, one day, one day you and I will be walking with Jesus along Hallelujah Avenue. What a day that is going to be. We'll be walking with Jesus along Hallelujah Avenue. We will, we will just be having a great time with Jesus. Walking and talking all along Hallelujah Avenue. And Jesus is looking forward um, for that. And I want you to know, friends, it won't be long. It won't be long. I, 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 the, the songwriter says it won't be long when we are, you know, when we'll be leaving here. It won't be long. We'll be going home. It won't be long when we be leaving here. It won't be long we will be going home. Amen. Count the years. <laughs> count the years as months. And, and count the months as weeks. Uh, uh, and count the weeks as days. We'll be going home, friends. We'll be going home. Amen. No time to waste. No time to waste. No time. No time to worry. No time. No time to, to sit down and, 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 and get discouraged. Get discouraged about the job. Get discouraged about the, you know, not having food to eat. No need. Jesus is on your side. Jesus knows what you need before you knew that you need it. Jesus, he knows it all. And he asked you and I, he asked you and I to trust him. Amen. Trust him. And that's all we need to do, trust God. And if we trust God, he will never fail us. Never fail us. Because in God there is no failure. Amen. In God there is no failure. And so, I want you to know that nothing, nothing, nothing must come between you and your Savior. Nothing must come between me and my Savior. Today, it might be gloomy. But friends, I want you to know that tomorrow will be bright. Tomorrow will be brighter. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. And I am looking forward to walking with Jesus along Hallelujah Avenue. Amen. And I pray that you too. Amen. I pray that you too are looking forward to that. And waiting in great anticipation for that day. When Jesus will come. And so friends. The angel came down and rolled the stone away. That stone that veiled Jesus from his followers. That stone that, that stood there as um, a justification by the, um, those individuals who crucified him. The, that, that stone that represented civil power. I am so glad that our God is greater than all powers. I am so glad that no civil power, however strong that power is, can withstand the strength of the living God. And so today, today I want to suggest to you that if you hear the voice of God, Speaking to you. Harden not your hearts. But open your hearts and invite him to come in and take control. To come in and take charge. Open your hearts. Open your hearts. Let nothing stand between you and your Savior. 
nothing. I want you to know, friends, that time is running out. Time is closing up. And Jesus soon will come. The greatest question that you will have to answer is when your name is called, will you be ready to go home? Ready or not? You know the little children say, ready or not? Here I come. Ready or not? Jesus is coming. He's coming. He is coming. He is coming. Jesus is coming. He's coming. He's coming for you. He's coming for me. Jesus is on his way. Jesus is coming. Come Jesus. Come quickly.